How's it going guys? I'm Daniel and welcome to Odyssey USA. Today we're going to take a little walk around my 2019 Wrangler Sahara and tell you everything that I've done to it over the course of the last four years and 74,000 miles. Now I won't get down into the nitty gritty details on the reasons why I did things the way I did. If you want to, ask in the comments section below and I'll be happy to answer those for you, okay? With that said, let's get to it. Okay, first off, we're starting with the Bullet Point Mounting Solutions Ruby Grid System. Uh, I think I paid about 100 bucks for it, and it's worked great. Uh, the customer service is absolutely fantastic. I think the only problem I've had is this uh, captured nut had fallen out, and I was worried that it had fallen into the vents. But I found it, and uh, they offered to replace it, no problem. On this next one here, I wanted to be able to sleep inside the Jeep, so I built a custom platform and I am using the child latch safety anchor right there with uh, three hose clamps and a bar of aluminum to disperse the load on the wood. This is um, rhino coating and this right here, I got this out of a Rubicon. So I got a filler panel so I can sleep in here and what I do is I put a three inch thermarest pad in here and it's been perfect. Next up is the Blue Ridge Overland Attic. I store pillows, blankets, and sleeping bags up here mostly. And if you want to keep it from falling out, what you do is you tighten up these paracords. There's an adjuster on that side and it just locks it in place and keeps it up there. And I'm very pleased it's done its job. Here we have the Rebel Blackout Kit. It's sold by Rebel Off-Road. And what it's good for is holding two two-gallon rotopacks. These replace the windows entirely, so you gotta take the glass out. I had a glass shop do it, and um, I don't know, they were being generous that day, and they did it for free. So I can't complain there. But uh, the rotopacks, they say they're two-gallon, but they're really more like 1.8. Don't pay ahead of time for two gallons of fuel because you're not going to fit it all in there. So just heads up. And while we're back here, let's go ahead and talk about the tire carrier. It is off of a Rubicon. It gave me some clearance to be able to put a 35 on there. I've stayed with the plastic bumper in part for the reason that it gives more clearance than the steel bumper does for the spare tire. Also, it will not transfer as much damage as a steel bumper would if I did smash it and it managed to make contact with the body. Also, another thing, I didn't want to get into a slippery slope. I wanted a 35s, that was my goal, and I felt that was sufficient for what I was doing. Uh, knowing, I saw it once, I can't find it again, but that uh, carrier reinforcement right here, Supposedly, I read that it's good up to 103 pounds, so I've done my best to make sure the combined weight of the tire and the wheel is under that. Initially, I had Mickey Thompson Baja Boss ATs on there that were 295 7018s, and with the 18 inch Sahara upgrade wheel, it came out to a weight of 98 pounds. Now, this is about 93.6 pounds total, so I am under that weight rating, assuming that was correct. Next up, I've got the MyMedic first aid kit. Brad from Trail Recon um, at the Moore Expo, I uh, spoke with him and he recommended that I go get a wilderness first aid course. And I did that and uh, with my daughter, we had a great time. So I highly recommend it, both of them. You can see here I have my Silky Sugawaza saw mounted to my Rebel Blackout kit. Um, I used industrial strength Velcro and it's been fine, but as you can see, there's a little bit coming off there. So I might have to revisit that. We have a right line gear traction board bag. Now this thing only holds two 
And how it's sitting up there is because of another mod, the XG Cargo Gamma Bags. They have a steel frame on the top, so what I did was I drilled a hole in the top and just got some inexpensive aluminum angle, 90 degree angle, and I zipped it to it. That way, in case of emergency, which traction boards would be, I just gotta either rip it out or cut it out. And uh, I also have it wedged up in there on the roll bar with some Velcro. Some of the Velcro glue over the last two years has kind of oozed out and, and come down, but it doesn't look like it's hurting anything. But anyway, it's up there, easy access, and utilizing what would be dead space. Everybody um, is probably sort of familiar with this. Got your molly loops here. Got my tools. Uh, not all my tools, obviously, but I uh, keep a lot of stuff. Tire repair. And uh, let's not forget my fire extinguisher. A thermocell, keep the mosquitoes away. And um, my last big upgrade is the refrigerator. Uh, before that, I was using a 70-something quart lifetime cooler, which is perfect. Uh, it's bear resistant, and um, I used it for our trip out west for two weeks. But this is going to be a game changer right here. Um, I'm going to look forward to using that here at Land Between the Lakes here real soon. You can see down here that um, I did something unorthodox. Uh, I wanted to be able to load everything up and move very little to be able to get access to my tools underneath, just in case, of course. Uh, I put some aluminum here. I sandwiched it on all three sides so that um, it wouldn't flex. I noticed this side was flexing just a little bit. Not bad. It could probably go without it. but. I knew that I was going to be putting this refrigerator on top of it, and I wanted to make it a little more solid. Um, is the refrigerator anchored? Sort of. I have used the sheet metal underneath this plastic piece. I have looped it around in a way that uh, something's going to have to break before it flies anywhere. Uh, I figure the paracord should be plenty strong enough, as well as the strap. The strap is definitely overkill. Um, I've got it secured there, and I've got it secured on the back loop. I don't know if you can make it out, but this thing on the other side. Next, we have the Outback Trail Gator Table. This was a present for my wife. Uh, I think it was for my birthday, so she got it for me. Otherwise, I don't know. I wanted it, but it's not a cheap mod. It's, uh, I think it's about 500 bucks now. So anyway, hold on a second. I'll show you how it works. There you go. Comes off. Gives you more work space. And make sure that this is centered well. And then uh, make sure these are the right direction here. You can see there's a taper. And then push and it snaps on each side and that's it here we have the maximus 3 tow loops the powder coating was flaking off so i took about eh, 45 minutes it didn't come off too it didn't it wasn't too hard to get it off and i just sprayed them with a, a heavy duty black paint that way i could touch up as needed Next up, we have what I did to the rear end. Um, initially, I stayed with 345 gears and I put this ox locker in. And at the same time, I put some 32 spline axles. They are out of a standard width 44 out of a Gladiator. Not a Rubicon Gladiator. I think it's the tow group one that has the standard width axles. But anyway, those axles go right in the Dana 35 right here, the Advantech 35. Anyway, it's got 456 gears uh, with the 35 inch tires. Uh, the switch, let me show you the switch. Here's the switch location for my rear locker. It's the only switch I have installed in the vehicle. Next up we have the JL Taser Light. 
I didn't need the full features of the Taser Mini, so I went with the light. It was just over 200 bucks, and it accounted for the change in tire size, the change in gear ratio, and it also helps me not have to constantly keep pushing that auto start stop button to turn it off. It also remembers the last setting for your traction control, which when you're off-road, that's nice. You don't have to keep sitting there holding it down for seven seconds or whatever. Here we have one of my favorite mods by Apex Designs. These are the Autolinx sway bar disconnects, and they will disconnect in under 10 seconds and reconnect in under 15. So how you do it, you just turn the knob, get the right direction there, all right? Red shows that you're disconnected. And you're disconnected. Now to reconnect, all you have to do is turn the knob back the other direction. And then come right here and you just have to get one side to click. Just like that. Now you can disconnect with up to four inches of articulation, but to reconnect, all you have to do is what I just did, turn the knobs on both sides and make one side click. It doesn't matter the amount of articulation they said per their website. Although I haven't been full on rock crawling with them, they've seen various terrain and washboard roads, which they've helped there as well. Uh, out west in South Dakota, Colorado, Wyoming, Montana, Idaho. Uh, I also went on the Daniel Boone Backcountry Byway and uh, they did great there as well. So I'm extremely pleased with it. Like I said, it's one of my favorite mods that I've ever done to this Jeep. And um, it's particularly good for Mojave. If you've got a Gladiator Mojave, these would be perfect because uh, besides not having a front locker, the only other thing that I would have wanted, because I was actually wanting a Mojave, was to have front sway bar disconnects. Another plus is these aren't electronic, so they're not gonna just fail due to some kind of electrical connector uh, or, and it's not gonna get seized up. These are made from high quality materials uh, the shaft is chromed just like a shock, so you're not going to get corrosion there and it sees up because of it. So again, it's a quality product made here in the United States. I'd highly recommend them. Give them a call. Next, I've got the Synergy Plus One springs all the way around. Basically, I'm just offsetting the droop that I got when I installed this heavy bumper and winch. Uh, I got one inch of my height back, so it did as it was intended to do. I've got my RCVs. I do not have it locked in the front, but I did want the benefit of stronger axle shafts. And also, in tight switchbacks, I didn't want it skipping when it might be a little hairy. So, I got these. And I have a moto built front diff cover to protect the gears. Now, I know I'm not typical, but I like the look of the stock lights. And with the difficulty in swapping out the bulbs, uh, given you got to take off the grill and possibly the winch, I did get the commercial level Phillips 9008 Master Duty. That's MD with twice the life of a standard bulb. I've got the Mopar Performance JT Grill. And uh, you can see here it's more open than normal. The reason I went with that is I had another bumper and winch on here as a warn that failed. Uh, was, I, I basically re spooled it twice and the brake failed. So I changed brands on the winch and I also changed the sub. In case I ever had a failure, I could wrap the synthetic line <laughs> around a hoop. Uh, being that it's top mount, I knew it was going to cut some airflow to the radiator. So I figured I like the looks. Went ahead and got the grill. Uh, next up, we got a come up winch. If you think that these are not the factory fender flares, then you would be correct. These are black plastic Rubicon replacements, non LED. I got these for about $700 when they were kind of hard to come by two years ago at CJ Pony Parts. 
I'll look at these as a consumable item. So uh, as opposed to getting a painted set and repainting them like they were when I originally bought this Sahara, I decided to go with the black plastic. Then I have the Baja Designs Squadron Sport Wide Cornering Lights. Uh, they've done well out west. And uh, they light up pretty good. They're inexpensive. Uh, they're only about $260, I think, right now. But anyway, uh, you can order a special wiring harness that plugs right into the factory fog light wiring harness. Uh, make sure you just ask for that when you order the set, and uh, they'll get you hooked up. The Asphere engine and transmission pan skid. At the time, it was a little over $200 to have it shipped to your house. But two years later, I checked the website, and it's closer to $400 now. Next up, I went with the Fox 2.0 shocks. Now, if you're familiar with expansion joints on bridges and what it feels like driving over those, compared to the Rubicon shocks, these smooth things out a little bit. So um, I felt like it was a good investment there. I was able to find these just a little bit more than the actual Rubicon replacement shocks. Next up, we've got the Kenda Cleaver RT tires. I think they're RT 610s. Now, the previous Mickey Thompson tires, they were E-load rated. These are probably about an inch narrower and D-load rated. So the ride did get a little bit better. And also, uh, I've gained a solid two miles per gallon. So if that's something that is of interest to you, then uh, maybe you need to go to Pizza Cutters. And last but not least, I've went with the Mopar Performance lower control arms. I think they were under $90, and they give you an extra degree of caster. So uh, being that they're rubber bushings and low to no maintenance, uh, I wanted to go that route. Well, that's everything that I've done so far. You know, modifications are a never-ending deal. We all know that. So uh, I don't know what the future holds. I'm kind of satisfied with where I'm at right now, but uh, you never know. Anyway, that's all I've got done to the Jeep so far in the last four years. Uh, it's served me well. It's been um, built to gear towards a daily drive routine, uh, being able to pick up the kids and then get inside easily without a lot of assistance. So there have been some compromises, but uh, for what it's worth, like the side steps, uh, I've seen a video of those take a little bit of a hit and not transfer the damage to the body. I don't really care if those get messed up because I can pick one up cheap on uh, Facebook Marketplace. So anyway, that's all I've got. Thanks for stopping by. And if you have any questions, leave those in the comments section below.